Hey everybody, Rodman here for another episode of Kenshi. So just a recap of last episode, we started a fledgling katana design business, uh, but I'm going to be pivoting that uh, very, very shortly. So instead of uh, katanas, I'm going to be um, maybe making some armor, and I'll explain why in just a second. I just want to outfit Rodamont for where he needs to go. Uh, so Rodamont's going to need... A bunch of different things. Uh, he's going to need Hamet's coat first and foremost. I know, a little weird. Um, I am going to pivot to armoring because, as was pointed out by a few of you, uh, like Ron Van Dorp, um, there is only so much that you can do in terms of uh, in terms of crafting weapons. There is a there is a a cap to how good you can do it and uh, as a result if I went down the path of trying to make myself really good weapons uh, ultimately I wouldn't be using them because uh, I would get to a point where I wouldn't need them so instead I'm going to work on armor smithing which is yes significantly different uh, so I'm gonna send Rodamont to go work towards that goal uh, he is heading off to a new city yet to be discovered but uh, it's somewhere around here. Uh, while Shrike here, because I no longer have need of the... I no longer have iron for the uh, forge here, this weaponsmith. Uh, and a lot of people uh, mentioned that they were sad that I did not recruit Beep, the uh, rejected Hiver. I'm going to rectify that right now and send her back to where she came from to go recruit Beep. And possibly buy some blueprints for armor smithing. Um, yep, so that is what I'm going to work on, uh, for right now. Uh, Chung here is going to be one of the first recipients, even though it doesn't benefit him all that much, of, uh, katanas. And I'm going to start rounding up everyone's weapons and selling them and making sure I'm using katanas only. Katanas are a good way to raise your dexterity, uh, mind you which is why I choose them over others. Um, all right, so we have some of our junk sold. Uh, I'm also looking for iron plates, which I'm not finding here. Hummet, do you have, he has a thieves backpack, but no, he does not have any, well, he has a weapon I can switch for. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Mr. Chung, give Hummet a one-hander. And this will go back to Chung. Okay. So the reason I'm switching to armor smithing is there is no penalty for homemade armor, whereas there is one for uh, weapons. So it benefits me to get weapons uh, get weapons through looting of world bosses and the like and then my armor will come from uh, home crafting if I so choose uh, so that's sort of the logic behind that so if we look uh, Radamont is heading northeast and Shrike is heading north back to mongrel and uh, they should be both set to passive so they don't engage and wish them godspeed. Radamont's moving pretty quick. So Radamont's heading to an area that that has acid rain. So I made sure to switch out some of the armor so that I have a little bit of acid protection because I don't really want to melt to death. Uh, that would suck. So for me to do heavy armor smithing, uh, as you can see here, I need engineering research, and that is different than just a regular research book. Uh, for me to get that, I need to head... Well, there's there's ways to fight for it, but uh, for, for me, because I haven't really taken on a lot of fights yet, because uh, I'm still waiting for some katanas and some decent armor, um, because this is an Iron Man playthrough, and I don't want to risk dying super early, I would like to get some better armor, so that's where that comes from. 
and Ranamont is passing through a lot of new territory, so he's discovering a lot of cool stuff. I hope I didn't mess up the pathing for Shrike here. It's still loading the zone. I was just making sure that she was doing all right. She's doing fine. All right, back to Hobbs. At this point, I think I've researched all of the freebie stuff, and I'm trying to save up for blueprints and engineering research, so I am not going to spend any more of my cash with Hobbs unless I have to, and uh, arguably I have to, because uh, at the moment I don't really have any food for anyone, so let's go remedy that. Load the bar, and talk to the barman. All right, now that the barman has sold us some stuff, head on home. Hauling to food storage. Okay, so we've plopped that all in there. Uh, I will have him, however, go to the way station. As you can see, all almost everyone is coming in for a quick meal here. They were all quite hungry, because I am a neglectful boss. Right, so taking a look at where everyone is, uh, Shrike is pretty close to Mongrel. Where is Radamont? Rodamont is in the Holy Mines. He's not quite where he needs to be. Uh, Shrike is basically at Mongrel. Let's just pop ourselves into the city and go recruit Beep, who I uh, ignored because I'm inexperienced at this game. There he is. Just saying Beep. Oh, beep. I think that's him. He should be one of the only hivers in here, so easy to spot. All right, Mr. Beep. Hi, Beep. Uh, I guessed your name. Uh, he was exiled because he just kept saying beep. He doesn't know what money is, so I welcomed to the team. Uh, I'm going to have Shrike sit here until the stores open up because I would like to buy some cool armor smithing blueprints. Um, but Beep here, I can send back to Squin, our temporary headquarters. Now checking up on Rodamont's travel progress. Where the hell is Rodamont? There we are. All right, so I'm actually heading into the acid rain area just now. So I should also, as you can see, watch. There we go. I'm 60% protected. But that's not perfect, obviously. So being here kind of sucks. I could have invested in some more acid rain protection, but I was just eager to get underway. So there's Black Desert City. And then just east of Black Desert City, there is the scrapyard. And as you can see, my character is griping that this is really no place for humans. Um, as I am basically melting. Um, now fortunately, this long coat does protect me reasonably well. 60% isn't anything to scoff at. Without it, I would be melting a lot worse. Alright, so the scrapyard is on the second floor. So I'm going to go to floor two. And head on up. And Quinn. Talk to Quinn. Alright, show me what you got. And obviously this um, vendor has stuff uh, way far over my head. Right? This is valued at 22000 45000 I mean, there's some seriously uh, powerful gear here. Um... 
that I don't have access to. What I'm looking for is um, ancient science books and engineering research. So here's some engineering research. I can afford one of them, uh, but that will unlock uh, plate armor crafting for me. And ideally, uh, I would buy a lot more. Well, let's let's hang out for just a second. See if I can't scratch up a little bit more cash. I don't think I'm going to scratch up much more than I already have. Oh, uh, Chung isn't home. I forgot about that. Uh, so who's home? Let's see. Is anyone... There is someone near the home. Shrike is waiting. Beep. Beep is still running. Is he running? Yeah, move order. Uh, all right, let's just pan around. Miu is close to home. Yeah, there's some ores that I could sell. Uh, let's see, anything else? General storage chest is empty. All right, Miss Miu. These stores just opened. There's the owner and we will oops that's not what I meant to do let's fix that we will sell the store oh come on there we go it's better all of our raw resources See about trying to make enough money for. Okay, we almost have enough money. I think I'm gonna set uh, have Radamont stay there just a little bit longer. Same with Shrike, uh, because ideally, if we're making armor, we want to be making armor that's like decent. So some decent items uh, would be. Nothing this guy has for blueprints. Okay, cool. Well, the luckily for me, they're not the only the only show in town. Uh, let's see, the black plate jackets, for instance, are pretty good. Um, so that might be something we aim for. Obviously, we are not wealthy enough. Um, so Rodamut will stay there. Chung. Chung is up here to buy some iron plates. I'm going to buy as much as he can carry. Uh, let's even sell our standard first aid kit. And uh, sell your armor. We'll make you armor. Okay, Chung, head back to Squin. Now I have five iron plates. Now the reason for it is, uh, once I can start converting my electric, uh, my copper into electrical components, that's that's a a steady source of easy income. Um, not high income, but you know it's something. So I have. A lot of irons in the fire here, you know, things here and there. Uh, I'm trying to keep track of everything I'm doing the best I can. So Beep, let's see, let's see. Beep is passing through the Hive Village. Guess I'll watch after some of these guys for the moment. Here's Dr. Chung running in, and we will have him deliver these iron plates, five out of the eight more we need, to the electrical bench. All right, we are out of food here as well. Really trying to budget everything. 
Um, the rest of these plates, let's get rid of the Q here. So Chung, take those plates back. Now, why katanas? You might ask. It's because they are really good. They're they're fast, so they're good at raising your dexterity um, more so than other weapons. Not saying that they're best weapons, but for a starter, they're some of the best things you can put your hands on. Now, where is Beep? Beep seems to be pretty close. I'm gonna have Beep swing into the market. There he is. Go to floor one. Stand next to the dude. Actually sell to the dude. And then... Oh, again. Screwed up in the same exact way. Okay, so we have enough to buy three more iron plates and buy some more uh, research. So I am having Beep deliver these iron plates so we can finish off this um, bench. And then my trip out here will yield twice as much. Uh, there we go. Let's get another engineering research. I'm not sure what we'll need it for yet, but it's nice to have it and not need it, then need it and not have it and send Rodamont home to Squin. And then that means that Shrike here um, obviously is, uh, could use some love, I guess is the easiest way to put it. Uh, Shrike um, is sitting in a city just sort of passively waiting. All right, so Crumpled, Crumpled John, um, I'm going to have become our electrical components crafter. And then Beep will take Crumple John's place on that copper. Uh, take off passive, because we are where we need to be. And now I'm going to be converting copper into electrical components, and that will help um, yield some more money as well. That's That will be nice. Uh, all the remaining money I have right now is going to go towards food. As we are in dire need of food. And they don't have any. Let's try the bread and be breakfast. Over here. They ought to have some dried meat. Hi, B&B. &B. What you got for me? You got food. Okay. And as you can see, the third priority task that um, the doc has is hauling the food store. So he'll do that automatically. Um, ahem. There we go. Uh, Rodamont is on his way back. Somewhere. And Beep is, is enjoying his days as a miner now. Okay, yep. We are getting back. We're about almost halfway. It's pretty good. Now, I'm still going to keep, for now, the Weaponsmith, um, because I do want katanas for everyone. Uh, it's a pretty good weapon to have to start off with. Uh, what, I, what I'll probably do, actually, is I'm going to have Dr. Chung um, somewhat collect everyone else's stuff um, to sell it. So everyone else's, or at least... Eh, maybe not everyone else's. I'll, I'll, I'll switch once I have the weapon in hand, so I'm not defenseless. Uh, of course, being f defenseless, martial arts isn't necessarily defenseless. So that fragment axe, of course, yielded 
a decent amount of little scratch for me you know so it's it's nice 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 kind of money um if you have a really good martial artist they can be pretty pretty capable and dangerous so i'm not saying that you need a weapon necessarily but it often helps okay so radamont's got through the acid range no problem and is now where is hamet where are you buddy Trying to fix meshes. Oh, don't make me regret it. Game. Shouldn't have done that on camera. Okay, good. That fixed. Uh, control shift F11 uh, can fix meshes, which fixes some of the pathing issues that uh, you can end up having. So uh, that's what I just did. Um, because of the way... The game allows you to dynamically create cities and all that. Um, the way characters path also have to be dynamic. So if you add a wall in, um, you have to be able to... Your, your game basically has to be able to recognize that, that new wall that you have... Um, okay, now we're moving. That new wall you have has pathing and you have to go around it, etc., etc., so as a result, um, every now and then it's nice to refresh your your um, meshes, but the danger is, while you do it on camera, uh, things can go wrong, and you know, I wouldn't use the word explode, but things can go wrong. This game is wonderful, don't get me wrong, but it is not necessarily the most stable game I've ever played. Uh, but it, compared to some of the AAA titles that are being released nowadays, it is, it's, it's holding its own. Uh, so we have some more iron plates. I'll buy them. And we can go and sell our uh, iron and our excess copper. I'm trying to make enough money to buy some basic armor for Shrike to build um, because at the moment uh, I don't even really have armor worthy of of, of construction. Alright, so Radamont's almost home, which is awesome. And once he's home, he can go see about trying to make some quick money off of uh, beak things or something like that. Maybe looting them and luring them into the hive town. Yeah, that wouldn't be uh, a lot of people have been suggesting that I exploit some stuff, like uh, luring them into town and stealing their eggs, but I don't really want to go that way. Alright, so plate armor crafting. Just paid for that. Mr. Chung, research it. Uh, now we have one more ancient research left over. Or not ancient research, but uh, engineering research left over in case we need it sometime in the future, like uh, crossbow crafting or, or something else. It depends on what I want to make next. Um, I'm not even sure what that might be. Uh, I'm just standing here because I had nothing better to do, but like I said, let's go to the Hive City now that we've eaten. Speaking of eaten, there's not a lot of food left there. Uh, speaking of food, oh, Shrike is okay on food. I don't need to worry just yet. I had that thought of, have I doomed her standing around all day long waiting for the cats to be able to buy? It's too bad there's no panhandling in this game. I'd be very good at, very good at panhandling. Is this a, what, a nomad camp or something? Usually when you mouse over it, it will tell you. All right, let's load the area where Radamont's at. There's some gorillos. Now, one thing to note that uh, when you're not in an area, it is functionally dormant. Uh, yeah, I'm going to buy all those iron plates. I know that doesn't help me buy my... Um, my... Uh, first blueprints, but... Um, we're going to want the iron plates anyway. 
for the katanas. I'm not fleeing your shop. I am just looking for some big things to poke at. What are you? Slave mongers? Uh, not, I don't approve of your job, but uh, we're not hostile with one another. Trying to find a beak nest. It's copper. Most of my games, they usually hang out around here, the beak things, but it all depends. There's like a little rundown brigand camp, campfires, probably nothing to loot in them. Nope, why would there be? All right, so we got the plate armor crafting. If I go back to Dr. Chung here, and go to crafting, uh, we can now potentially do a heavy armor smithy, which is pretty cool. Uh, if I have, which I probably don't, the room for it, uh, we'll have to either move the electrical components or buy another building, um, or just move the bedding around, which might be the cheapest uh, solution. Yeah, maybe I'll go ahead and do that. So, let's dismantle some of these beds. They're camp beds anyway. You know, sleeping on the floor. All right, Mr. Chung. Plus, they yield sleeping bags so they can be moved pretty easily. Um, camping camp bed. Now, as you can see, real estate uh, becomes somewhat important. I don't have the very large building shells researched, which offer a lot more room. Uh, but eventually you get like large building shells and things that are a lot more spacious. Uh, right now, I'm sort of restricted to what I've researched, which is not uh, spacious. Right. I wasn't sure if this could fit under the stairs or not. The electrical workbench can, so I can move that down. Which is expensive to keep moving things around, but, you know, I'm new at the game. I'm learning. It's just the way it, just the way it is sometimes. Uh, so if we want to build that, we're going to need a lot more iron plates. Um, and I don't have the iron plates at the moment. Alright, what about Radamon? We have him on passive. He was poking around, seeing if there was any fights to be profited off of around the Hiver City. Uh, there is a Big Things Nest. There it is. So... We can go stir the nest up a little bit, try to drag them into town. Oh, where is the nest? The nest is here. I'm at the nest. Oh yeah, they're sleeping. Well, that will yield some pretty money. I know I didn't. I said I didn't want to do a get-rich-quick scheme, but um, I also don't want to have my mistakes from being new uh, belabor the ep the series. So you know, there's there's that too. So it's not like I'm gonna go steal big things, big thing eggs all the time. Uh, but obviously, these things have some nice sell value and then I can get back to work on my goals all right so mister you are gonna buy my eggs never thought you'd hear me say that right and then I'm gonna buy their um, iron plates 
And... Ooh, I wish they had a cheap fish. Ceramic bowl? No. Uh, just buy some thin fish. It's not that expensive. Head on back to Squin. All right. Uh, all the way to Squin. Come on. Start moving. There we go. And now, um, Shrike here can think about buying that blueprint finally. Where did it go? Black plate jacket. That is something that someone told me would be a good one to start on. Um, so there we go. Did just that. And uh, let's send her home. She'll swing by the high village on her way back. Running 26 miles an hour. Well, we're at the max possible speed, so that's not exactly true, but it's pretty cool, right? Being able to sprint this fast. Now that we've been away from the base for a bit, there's also the possibility of selling off a lot of the excess resources and stuff that we have uh, accumulated. So first, let's move the electrical bench. Expensive mistake, but, you know, everyone makes them. Uh, and let's build that up. Oh, actually, you know what occurs to me? I am out of time. Um, so this will have to be for next episode. I feel like I actually got a lot of stuff done this episode. If you have any feedback for me, I'm a new player. I'm definitely uh, in need of feedback. Uh, mostly if it pertains to the goals I've set out for myself, like armor smithing or... Um, training myself up or city building. If you have any tips of that nature, those would be most helpful. Um, I also really love how there's an outpouring of love for this game. Uh, these developers are awesome. They poured a lot of love into this. Um, so it's pretty cool that you all want to watch this. Uh, so yeah, I, I obviously I'm not endorsing the company because you know I don't work for them or anything. But uh, yeah, can she? Might not be the most gorgeous, but oh man, can you tell it's a labor of love. And I love games like that. And uh, yes, there will be, there is a demand for an episode a day. And I understand that. So as soon as the Stellaris series is finished up, uh, I think I'm going to move over to an episode a day. So uh, maybe you all don't need to keep asking me for that because uh, I agree with you. All right, well, adios. And I hope you tune in uh, next time. Farewell.